Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary Channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 23rd of February of 2023. And today I would like to start this video with one of the most important questions that we have about the special military operation. Around a year ago, a year and a little bit more, in a few hours, the Russians started their special military operation. We, we can understand the Russians. We can understand all their warnings. We can understand their feelings. And also we can understand the Ukrainians. What are they thinking about? What do they want? And also we can understand the Western countries in NATO, Joe Biden. We can understand everything. And during this year, we found answers to almost every single question we had during this year. But there is one important question left. And today I would like to start with this question. You may ask, what is this? What I'm, tr I'm trying now to talk about today? Somebody, someone of you thought and think that I'm going to talk about, let's say, offensive operation direction of Odessa. Yes, this is important, but not so important. Maybe you think who I will try to discuss the question where the Russians are planning to stop, whether the Russians are able to break through the Ukrainians, to penetrate, to establish control, or maybe NATO countries and Western countries with Ukraine are able to defeat the Russians and maybe to collapse Russia, entire Russia. Now, this is not the most important, because now we don't know for sure whether the Russians are going to win or the Western countries. Today everything is balanced, 50-50. Yes, my opinion, now it's 50-50. We don't see any progress from the Russian side. And we see that the Ukrainians are not collapsed. collapsed. And we don't see any progress from the Ukrainian side. Yes, we talk about lots of Western weapons, but we still haven't seen any progress. So everything is balanced. And today I'll start this video with the question, with the thing that can ruin this balance. There is a one thing in this world that can ruin this balance in someone's favor. And this video I would like to start about China. Yes, China. It's very interesting and very complicated situation because there is a war between Russia and Western countries and China is the country that are able to break the situations in some, someone's favor. I believe that if China is going to be neutral, maybe there is a chance, very slow chance that Ukraine with the Western countries are able at least to stabilize the situation. I'm not talking, I'm not saying that they're able to break the situation, but at least I, I believe that they're able to stabilize. But let's say if China join or start supporting Russia, there is no doubt that Ukrainians will be collapsed within, I believe, 12 months from the moment when China starts support Russia. And you ask me, why do I think that China is going to enter and join special military operation. I thought a lot about this situation today and uh, I don't know if you know, if you heard or not, but uh, the Russian sources are saying that during the next days uh, Xi Jinping, the leader of China, is going to present his own speech, his own vision and understanding of this special military operation. Furthermore, as you know, maybe within the next few months, uh, Xi Jinping, the leader of China, is going to visit Russia and to have a personal meeting with Putin. But this is also just details, not the most important. The most important is whether the China are going to end to join this operation or not. And before I explain you everything, I'll give you my opinion. Yes, they will. So why is that? Why? The thing is that the Western, con the Ukrainian Western con sources and Ukrainian sources today they published a very interesting piece of news. 
they told us that within using these secret channels china provided ukraine zelensky person zelensky the personal vision of leader of china about special operation and about the things that should be done to establish peace on the territory of ukraine stability and peace and ukrainian sources are saying that zelensky completely denied the plan of c of comrade c he denied and he refused even to discuss this plan i think that uh, maybe it wasn't zelensky opinion maybe it was a command from the states not to even discuss this plan who knows but no matter what i believe that this plan worked in russian favor and i believe that china have has already took a decision what to do and i believe that they took a decision to support russia you need to understand one important thing that china is going to support russia not because of the situation that they support russia in global questions or they uh, try to uh, or they not support ukraine no this is not the main reason the main reason is that china during this military race are forced to join this special operation because now we see that ukraine is not a battlefield ukraine is not a battlefield because there are no changes on the front line since i believe for months front line hasn't been changed changed for months ukraine is the polygon is the polygon to test weapon and you need to understand one important thing that when talking about even russian army russian military uh, science there is a huge distance between russian military science that we saw on the 24th of february of 2022 and today we don't see this uh, difference on the ground but believe me there are very huge distance in the technic documentation in the some kind of uh, first test examples the russians have been improved they have improved their own army and the sa same things about the western countries in nato they received significant amount of russian weapon missiles rockets tanks even t90 the western countries got t90 during the counteroffensive operation in kharkiv area they managed to capture completely re fixed repaired and ready to go t90 tank i believe they discovered they test this tank and they already have found the solution the better way how to destroy this tank so there is a very big and very bloody race military race between united states of america and russia and ukraine and the war in ukraine will be won by those country by those part side who are able to win this military race and we we today these days we are just at the very very beginning of this race and if we're saying that there is a significant distance between russia today and russia a year ago between nato today and nato a year ago what can we say about china i don't know the only thing i can say about china that they are not testing their weapon anywhere and if the chinese authorities are planning to start solving issue their own issue according to their understanding of the situation with taiwan first of all they need to receive an answer whether they are able to fight and to stand against nato and the western weapon or not and believe me i don't think they want to receive such a surprise somewhere at the near the taiwan island that they're completely unready to fight with the nato weapon i believe they need to receive an answer now china don't want to enter this special operation but they see that the distance between them and nato countries and even russia every single day becomes more and more huge and this is the pressure this is the goal this is the value assets they are can't allow them to lose they need to start testing their weapon 
they need to they need to start this race and they need to be like shoulder to shoulder to Russians in the United States of America to be ready to understand and to understand the ha- the powerful signs and the uh, and not powerful signs sides of their own weapon that China produce of course we can say that with this logic China can uh, let's say start supporting western countries but the thing is that this case uh, they will provide Ukraine their weapon, this weapon, the Western countries will get this weapon very fast as soon as they can. I don't think that Ukrainians will provide China Western weapon. So this is not the case. One more time, this is not again, China will support Russia not against Ukraine. They will start support the Russians because they need their weapon to be on the battlefield. They need the Russians to test their weapon. I hope that this special operation will be finished before China enter and join this operation. But something tells me that it won't gonna happen. And the most important thing, yes, of course, we talk about military science, we talk about the distance and so on. Now, just imagine yourself how much money the Russians, NATO, United States of America invest into military science just imagine about their economy about their finance when talking about the russians as a result of special operations as a result of those sanctions they lost just a little bit more than two percent of gdp a little bit more and you need to understand that if if the special operation didn't start and the western countries uh, applied all those sanctions the russians might lost my lose uh, my Mm, around 30%. So that means that this difference between 30% and 2% is Russian investments into military sphere. I can't even imagine the numbers of the economy of the United States of America, of their military sphere and their military part of economy. From this perspective, this is the best investments. This is the best investments and China understands this as well. So, and that's it about the further plans about the further year. So I believe, one more time, that China is going to join special military operation on the side of Russia and they will push, at, or at least China will support Russia at least some period of time until they see that um, they, uh, they, can, they help them, until they see that, uh, enough, at this level we are okay. We don't want you, the Russians, to be more powerful. So at this area, we're enough. We see, we we saw a lot. We have a lot of data, and from now on, nothing more. So they will do like the same thing, like the Western countries are doing. We're giving you the weapon, but not the best things. So China, maybe at some po- certain uh, point of special operation, will start support Russia. They will give them the weapon, but at some point, they will give them, but not the best examples. It's obviously. Now let's talk about the situation today. This morning at 6 a.m. I, uh, this morning I published an extra video about uh, uh, about Moldova, Transistania and Russia, Ukraine. And uh, I will just one more time I will repeat because this is very important. At 6 a.m. of the local time, the Russians uh, reported that Ukrainians are planning to make some kind of provocation the ter- territory of Transistania. That Ukrainians collected their forces along these two roads near Balta and near Okne, this one. And according to the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, these forces were planning to change their uniform and to use Russian uniform. And uh, they were, um, the plan was to make some kind of provocation on the border between Transistania and Ukraine and uh, with the usage of Russian uniform as if the Russians were attacking Ukraine from Transistania. And uh, the Ukrainians were planning to use this case to start their own offensive operation in direction of, uh, of Transistania. And the main thing they were they wanted to achieve is to establish control over the warehouses of Transistania. So that was the plan. And that was the first thing. And the second thing was that as a result of that attack, this territory would be... It was another media victory, of course. Uh, Moldova would establish control over this territory. And, of course, Moldova will, would be completely free to join NATO and the European Union because there are no problems with the borders and with any clashes. And the Russians warned the Ukrainians that we see everything, we saw everything, and we know what to do with this. I don't know what kind of decision the Ukrainians took, the Ukrainian military authorities took about this situation. I believe that uh, they don't give a... 
they they don't and um, they are not interesting interested in Russian opinion. But later, somewhere at noon time, we got another update. But at noon time, we received an update from uh, Ukrainian side. The Ukrainian intelligence reported that they spotted very interesting activity near on the border of a Chernigov area. So this is Chernigov, and the Ukrainians reported that they saw a convoy of Russians uh, somewhere here. And the thing is that they reported that those Russians uh, were using the uniform without any signs. So it is impossible to understand and to determine uh, which forces these uh, soldiers belongs to, belong to. And the thing is, and that's it. So the Russians blamed the Ukrainians of, uh, of usage their mil Russian military uniform to start provocation um, near Moldova and the Ukrainians blamed the Russians of usage of Ukrainian uniform to start some provocation in Chernigov area. The question is, what is the sense when talking about the Russians to make any provocation in Bryansk area near Chernigov because they can start offensive operation without any provocation. So it's like a war, it's like special operation. But the thing is that the Ukrainians uh, were trying to say that the Russians according to the Ukrainian intelligence, were trying to change what was planned to use the Russian soldiers to change the uniform and uh, to use Ukrainian military uniform and to start, let's say, somewhere on the border, small offensive operation or small provocation in direction of Belarus. And, uh, of course, uh, this case may uh, allow the president of Belarus to start war or to join special military operation on Russian side and to attack Ukraine. So that was some kind of two cases and both sides were like warned each other what can we do. The Ukrainians warned, the Russians warned the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians warned the Russians, but for now there are no changes and I believe that uh, this situation is not going to be changed during the day or the next days because at least for now I believe that nobody wants any special operation or, let's say, a rocket or missile somewhere in the territory of Moldova. I don't think so. Now let's start about the situation on the ground. The Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation reported that, when talking about Kupin's front line, during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost 55 soldiers, two armored vehicles and one artillery system D-20. As you can see, there are not much changes in comparison with the previous days, the same level of losses, there are no changes on the ground. The Russians managed to short the front line near Gorbovka, Dvoreshne and uh, Gryanikovka, but they still haven't started any offensive operation in the direction of uh, Kupiansk. So let's follow and let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at this situation in the next few days. Now let's move to Liman front line and um, this today, uh, this day, have, uh, differs from the previous days. First of all, the Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost just 85 soldiers, three armored vehicles, and two artillery systems, one Gvazdika Hovazor and another D-30. As you can see, today, in comparison with the previous days, the level of Ukrainian losses uh, have decreased. I don't know uh, why is that, what is the reason, what is of that situation, but I see that the level have decreased. Uh, I believe that we need to see the numbers tomorrow and if the, uh, the level uh, will be decreased tomorrow as well. So that means that something have changed on this front line, on the Liman front line. And then we will try to analyze what have changed or what the Russians, maybe the Russians have changed their plans or something like this. Anyway, I believe that uh, tomorrow or the day after we are going to see the uh, Chinese leader plan about the situation and then we will understand exactly what the Russians are planning to do because I believe that now the Russians still haven't started any actions be to, because uh, there was some kind of agreement maybe between leader of China and Russia and maybe the agreement is not to start anything before uh, he provide his speech and his understanding of spe special operations. So let's see. Now let's talk about Bakhmut. The Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours, uh, the Ukrainians lost on Donetsk front line around 210 soldiers, 10 armored vehicles and two artillery systems, one Grad and another D-20 Hovitzer. So as you can see, uh, there are no changes if we compare the Donetsk front line 
since the uh, I believe December of uh, 2022 the, cl the battle is in its culmination there are very heavy clashes very heavy duels artillery and uh, the Russians continue their storming operation furthermore today the head of Wagner confirmed finally confirmed that the Wagners managed to restore every single road the level of supply and support of their of Wagners during this storm if you remember starting this week there was a lot of um, uh, interviews a lot of videos and records where the head of Wagner said that they don't have enough of weapon that Minister of Defense reduced the level of support but today at 6 a.m this level was completely restored and now Wagner's have enough of everything they need so that's why I believe that within the next few days they will increase the pressure and today's losses of Ukrainians are saying that uh, because yesterday the loss was 250 today 210 so it's very high losses furthermore the Russians reported during the day that they managed to establish final control over Birkhovka now today they told us that they established control and they started clearing operation I believe that tomorrow they will confirm about the ending of the clearing operation and the day after tomorrow the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation will confirm the 100% control over this town but uh, the there is there are no there is no still um, tactical encirclement just operational encirclement but uh, as soon as Berkhovka will be confirmed as the Russians they're going to be tactical encirclement and after that the Russians will continue development in direction of Dubovo, Vasilyevka, Yahidne and the north of Bakhmut I believe that very soon uh, Bakhmut is going to fall and uh, according to my understanding in March this town is going to fall and then we see what is going to be next now let's talk about Donetsk itself the Russians uh, have been activated in this area as well there are heavy clashes in Novo Bakhmutovka the Ukrainians published video of tank uh, of column tank attack on the north of Novo Bakhmutovka so there are very heavy clashes but for now I believe that the party sides are trying to fill the ground fill the situation and uh, there is there uh, nothing serious um, haven't uh, started yet so I believe by that within the next few days the real clashes will be activated in this area when talking about Donetsk there are no changes on the ground the Russians control Vadiana, Oputna, Pieski, Pirovamaiska without any progress on the ground I believe they expect for something else very interesting updates are coming from Marienka from this front line as you can see the Russian sources map has been updated uh, I'm talking about the south part of Marienka now the Russians according to information controls the farms in this area and so on but today some Russian sources reported that finally the Russians managed to penetrate this area and somewhere um, in the middle of of uh, this day they reported that the russians managed to enter Pobeda, this town and now there are very heavy clashes inside of this town i believe that within the next few days this town is going to fall and then the russians will be able to short the front line and finally start the clashes for uh north of uglidar bridgehead in direction of Konstantinovka, Novo Mikhailovka, with one purpose to cut the road that the Ukrainians are uses to supply and support Uglidar. Now let's talk about South Donetsk front line. The Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours, as a result of clashes on South Donetsk front line, the Ukrainians lost 105 soldiers, six armored vehicles, including one tank, three artillery systems, one STB, D20, and D30 howitzers. Furthermore, as a result of artillery duels and clashes, the Ukrainians lost up to six ammo depots in this area. Now let's talk about the losses. The Ukrainians lost 105 soldiers on the Uglidar front line. This is a very uh, high level of losses because, to tell the truth, I was trying to find the same number, this almost, uh, but I haven't. The biggest number of Ukrainian losses on this front line for the last, uh, I believe, two months was around 90 soldiers. Soldiers, furthermore, when the Russians were talking about um, the losses on this front line, they were adding the Zaporozhye front line. So they were saying that as a result of clashes during the previous 24 four hours on the South Donetsk and Zaporozhye area, the Ukrainians lost, well, now, let's say, 90 soldiers and four armored vehicles and so on. But today they con con reported just about South Donetsk and they 
told us about 105 losses among manpower. So the losses of Ukrainians on Uglidar have been increased. We can understand this as well. The thing is that um, during the previous week, the Ukrainians started their own counter-offensive operation. Let's take a look at the Institute of Study of War map in South Donetsk area. And this is Uglidar and this is the blue cloud I'm talking about. So this area, this, or, this blue cloud used to be orange cloud maybe two weeks ago. That was the progress of the Russians in this area. And later this week the Ukrainians launched their own counter-offensive operation and they managed to push the Russians back from this, from the south of Uglidar. And now there are clashes for residential area between Pavlovka and Mikolska. And every single map confirms this information, so this is the area. And this is the reason why the Ukrainian losses uh, increased, uh, because they started counteroffensive operation, they started leaving their fortifications, they start entering uh, open ground, open fields, they start entering minefields, so that's why their losses have been increased uh, since they started their counteroffensive operation. But anyway, uh, as the same thing as uh, the Liman frontline, we need to analyze the data for bigger for for more days we need to uh, take a look at the numbers tomorrow because if tomorrow this number is known and is not going to be decreased that means that something else is happening on this front line for now i can't tell you exactly what is going on but i see that the losses the level of losses of the ukrainians on this front line have been increased since the ukrainians launched their own counter-offensive operation uh, the only thing that comes to my mind, maybe that was the Russians' plan, because they saw that Ukrainians sit uh, in this Uglidar and they uh, haven't left this town since uh, March of this year, of the previous year. So maybe the Russians, by their own offensive operation, were trying to force the Ukrainians to move more reserves and to force them to leave the fortress. And now, now the Russians are able to to reduce the Ukrainians in this area. And they're doing this right now. And as we, now we see the numbers confirms uh, our thoughts. When talking about Kherson area, there are heavy artillery duels. The Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours, as a result of artillery duels in this area, the Ukrainians lost two artillery systems, one Stab B Hovitzer and another D-30 Hovitzers. And that's it about the situation in the ground. As you can see, the front line is stable, just small changes around Bakhmut, very slow, but they are these changes. And for now, I expect just one thing, the, um, the speech of the leader of China, Xi Jinping. I'm very curious what is he going to talk about, um, because this may change the entire situation, not just in Ukraine, but in the world as well. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you that we condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes, join my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye bye.